Tesla prices are spiraling upwards, and is there an end in sight, or will more people be priced out of the EV market? If you're in the market for any of the Tesla models right now, and you've been paying attention, you'll have seen a disturbing number of price increases over the last 12 to 14 months. Due to surging petrol prices, reduced availability of core electric car ingredients, and the ever-growing demand for their vehicles, Tesla raised prices by a whopping 20%. That's between the beginning of 2021 and April 2022. The Model Y long range started 2021 at just $10 shy of $50,000, but since has soared to a tenner under 63 grand. That's a 26% increase in purchase price. Couple that with the increase of Tesla's full self-driving package from ten dollars to $12,000, and you're effectively looking at a $75,000 car before you've added the arbitrary destination and documents fee of $1,200 and of course the taxes. For the same money, you could pick up a 2015 Aston Martin V8 Vantage S, which would also be kind of cool. Tesla isn't alone in price increases. We've seen Rivian raise prices for all orders, including pre-orders by over $12,000. And that made people who had bought into the Rivian dream early, very, very unhappy. Credit where it's due, they walked back the increases for people who had already pre-ordered, but only because of pressure from the public and a social media backlash. Thankfully, Tesla honors the price at which you ordered regardless of an increase down the line. In fact, if you pre-ordered any Tesla model, you can still add full self-driving at the price it was when you placed your original order, which feels like a nice, if small, concession. So how can Tesla continue to report record quarter after record quarter whilst their costs and pricing are spiraling upwards? Well, put simply, it's down to you and I. Demand for electric vehicles, but especially Tesla products, is insane right now. Reports suggest Elon is seeing a 100% increase in orders year over year, and even as the Austin Giga Texas factory comes online and starts producing vehicles, it's going to take several months of ramp up and scaling of production numbers until we see it have a real strong impact. Even with Giga Texas running at full chat, it remains to be seen if the mammoth void between supply and demand will start to shrink. One added spanner to the works is the introduction of the 4680 structural battery packs being produced at its Cato Road pilot facility in California. Tesla faces the issues of having multiple battery variants in production at the same time. The Fremont factory is continuing to build Model Ys with the 2170 cells, whilst 1,500 miles to the east, the Austin factory has been churning out 4680 models. It's really hard to see how Tesla can handle this elegantly. The 4680 variants have a possible range and charging speed improvement over their 2170 cousins, and Tesla claims the 4680 cells produce six times the power and have five times the storage capacity. At Battery Day in 2020, Elon suggested the 4680 cells could offer a 16% increase in range for a significantly reduced cost to produce. But as it stands with the 4680 batteries being built in uh, Austin, Texas, we don't know if they are maintaining the kilowatt hours for the, each of the batteries or if they're going to reduce the battery size in the 4680 structural packs in order to match the range of the 2170s. But even if the battery packs get nerfed to match the 2170s range, the vehicle would be lighter, changing the handling characteristics and potentially making this a very different vehicle to drive. One potential solution can be found on the new EPA Model Y variants published in early March. Here you can see two new models, the rear wheel drive with an EPA range of 244 miles and the all wheel drive with a range of 279 miles. Both of these are markedly below the current Model Y long range that offers 330 miles of range on the standard wheels. Yet they appear to be more efficient than the current production models. The question is, are these using different size 4680 packs or are they using the lithium ion phosphate batteries found in the standard range model 3? There are pros and cons to the ion based batteries. Two big downsides are poor cold weather performance and the strange phenomenon known as battery memory that requires you to charge to 100% at least one time a week to avoid battery degradation. On the plus side, they're cheaper to make and charging them to 100% over and over won't damage your battery, unlike the lithium ion packs found in the rest of the model lineup. Currently, these are used in the Power Wall, the Power Pack, and the Mega Packs, which show they are proven technologies. Right now, LFP batteries aren't going to suffer from supply constraints due to the abundance of iron and they'll be less susceptible to price and volatility as the nickel-based batteries used elsewhere in the model lineup. And would also allow Tesla to offer a less expensive model or two and allow them to pump out more customer orders, again, reducing that supply-demand imbalance. But as of today, we don't know which battery tech is powering these new models. So it's a waiting game for all of us. Fingers crossed, more will become clear at the official Giga Texas factory opening on April 7th and the party that it shoes. We should get some good information from Elon Musk with his loose lips create social media buzz. Needless to say, it's a pretty rough time to be a prospective Tesla buyer. Prices are going up, 
lead times are increasing and I can't see either of those improving in the near future. Hopefully that new standard range Model Y will be closer to $50,000 and the new all wheel drive around 55K and hopefully not a penny more. Full transparency, I'm hoping to pick up a Model Y towards the end of this year due to still being in a lease agreement. Uh, and I'm concerned that if the supply chain doesn't start to show signs it will improve and as a result, Elon cranks the price increase handle, I and many others could be priced out of a Tesla altogether. There are plenty of other lower priced options potentially on the market in around a year's time. We're gonna look at more on this channel. So let me know where you are in your Tesla experience and leave a comment below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, throwing down a like, and I will see you in the next one.